All right, if you're watching this video, then you've clicked on the help button on the catchment and treatment summary results worksheet uh, labeled help series. Uh, so this is going to be example problem number 11 in the user's manual. Uh, so at the very end of the user's manual, there's 15 example problems, and this is example problem 11. Mike, you want to start over. It, it, it said series button. It is. It's a three, oh. Three yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rather than run through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, if you are watching this video, then you have clicked on the help button on the catchment and treatment summary results worksheet for the help with multiple catchments. Uh, so this is actually example problem number 11, which is at the end of the user's manual, uh, which is available at the Stormwater Academy website. Uh, this uh, example problem deals with three catchments. We're gonna look at them in both series as well as in parallel. Uh, this here is the problem statement. Um, this is how it appears in the user's manual. Um, right here is a, is a table that summarizes the pertinent information for the problem that we're going to solve. So like I said, we're dealing with three catchments. Each catchment is five acres. Uh, we're located east of Brooksville in Hernando County in Florida. Um, we're, we're going to have a swale in the first catchment, which is about 1.11 acres. We're going to have a one acre retention basin in the second catchment. And then we're going to have a one acre wet detention pond in the third catchment. Uh, the, the treatment objective for this problem is net improvement. Um, right here is a, a summary of our pre and post development uh, catchment uh, conditions. So we have our our land use type uh, is agricultural pasture for all three catchments. Um, our our, our non-DCIA curve number for pre and post. Our DCIA percentage for pre and post. Um, and then our post-development land uses, we're going to do um, highway for catchment one, high intensity commercial for catchment two, uh, and low density residential for catchment three. Um, our, our swale parameters are summarized in this table right here. And then um, our retention basin parameters are summarized here. And it's just simply that we're dealing with a quarter inch over the catchment area. And this is actually due to site limitations. So we're not going to be able to, to achieve our, our total treatment in, in, in that catchment alone. Um, and then our, our last one is, is our wet detention pond. Um, and we have a 30-day residence time. We will be using a littoral zone. And we'll get a 10% credit for that. Okay, so now we're going to go to the model. Um, so when you open the model, you'll, be, you'll come to this page. Um, again, there's help for the introduction and background and, and hydrograph and legacy programs. Um, I'm going to go straight to the program so we can start solving this problem. So first, we're going to click here to start. Okay, so now that brings us to the general site information page. Um, the first thing you want to do whenever you open and run the model is you want to reset the, reset the model in case there's any data that was left in from a previous run. So I'm going to collect the, or select the reset input for stormwater treatment analysis button. Okay, and then that's going to go through and delete everything in the uh, model. Okay, so now everything's been deleted in the model and now we're ready to start with our problem. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is input our, the name of the project. Um, for this, we're doing example problem 11. Okay, uh, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna select our meteorological zone. So in order to do that, we'll view the zone map Okay, so clicking on the zone map button, it brings us to a picture of the state of Florida uh, where it um, shows the, the rainfall clusters um, uh, uh, in, in different colors on, on this picture. Um, so for our project, we're dealing with um, Hernando County, which is over here kind of by Brooksville. Um, so that is obviously in zone four, okay, based on this, this color here. So now I'm going to click on the general site information button to proceed back to the general site information page. OK, 
Okay, and then if I select the gray box, the little arrow will appear so that I can view the, the drop-down menu. And then from there, I'm going to select Zone 4. Now we want to input our mean annual rainfall. Uh, we'll do the first uh, click the view annual rainfall map. Okay, and then this shows the entire state of Florida with, with all of the, um, the, the ISO lines for the different um, rainfall volumes throughout the entire state. Um, since we're dealing with the central part of the state, I'm going to expand the view for the central region by clicking this button right here. Okay, and then that gives us a close-up of the central part of the state. Um, as I said, we're in uh, Hernando County over here. And that puts us, uh, you know, uh, in the 51 to 52 inch um, range. Uh, for our problem, we're going to use 51 inches. So now I'm going to go back to the general site information and input that value. Okay, so now that we have our our rainfall total uh, entered in, uh, we need to select the type of analysis. You select the box, the little drop down arrow will appear. You can select the drop down arrow and then there's three options. You can either select net improvement, which would be a pre-equal post analysis. Uh, you can select specified removal efficiency, so if there is a, uh, a treatment objective uh, that you're trying to achieve, say 80% um, nitrogen and phosphorus removal, or you could select BMP analysis, which would allow you to um, analyze different BMPs or combinations without um, trying to ob obtain a specific goal. For this project, or for this example, we're going to be selecting net improvement. So we want post equal to pre. And now since we've selected uh, net improvement, we, we don't have a need to insert any values here um, for our treatment efficiency. Um, these would, if, if, if we had to select uh, specified removal efficiency, we can specify a nitrogen and a phosphorus removal efficiency goal. Um, since we're not doing that, we're going to just continue forward and we're going to now uh, input the information for our watershed characteristics. So let's go to the watershed characteristics worksheet by selecting on this button. Okay, so this here is our watershed characteristics um, spreadsheet. The first thing that we want to do is we want to select our catchment configuration. So in order to see the, the different configurations available, we're going to click on the view catchment configuration button here. Okay, so looking over here, you can see we have 14 different um, catchment configurations that are available. If I scroll down, here's some more here. Okay, for our example problem, we're dealing with three catchments, and for our, for our part A, we're going to look at it in series. So I'm going to make note that I'm doing um, D, three catchments in series. So now I'm going to go back to the watershed characteristics worksheet and click the button. Okay, and then so now I want to select this gray box, which will let the arrow show so I can get the drop down menu. And then I'm going to go to D, three catchments in series, and select that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to input my pre and post development land use conditions for all three of my catchments. Note that each catchment has to have everything entered into it. So first I'm going to go do my pre development land use, uh, which is agricultural pasture. And then my post-development land use, which we specified as highway. Okay. And then now the size of uh, my watershed is five acres, or excuse me, my catchment. Okay. And then my pre-development non-DCIA curve number is specified as 78. My pre-development DCIA percentage is zero. My post-development non-DCIA curve number is 78. My post-development DCIA percentage is 60. And then my estimated area of BMP is 1.11. We're going to do a 1.11 acre swale in this BMP, or in this catchment. Now, the reason that we input the area for the BMP is because the water management districts have 
uh, mandated that your BMPs will not contribute nitrogen and phosphorus loading for calculation purposes. They will, however, generate volume that must be accounted for. So that is why we input this value here uh, for, for the BMP area. Also note that the pre- and post-development mass loadings for nitrogen and phosphorus are both shown uh, for this catchment. Um, if, if we did not want to use these values, if we had some data that would um, support us to use different values for our EMCs for our pre- or post-development conditions, we can overwrite these values by selecting the overwrite default concentrations um, button here. And then if we were to do that, then we would input uh, those EMC values in these boxes up here for our pre and post uh, conditions respectively. This option is available for all of the catchments. Now we're going to go on and input our data for catchment number two. Um, again, we're agricultural pasture as our, as our pre-development condition. Our post-development condition here is high intensity commercial. Okay, so we'll select that. Our uh, watershed, or our catchment size is five acres, so I'm going to input that in the first two boxes. Um, next is our, our curve number, which is uh, 78. And then our pre-development DCIA percentage, which is zero. And then our post-development curve number, which is 78. And then our post-development DCIA percentage, which is 80. And then we're going to input our estimated area of our BMP. Okay, now we move down to our third catchment and input our pre-development land use, agricultural pasture. Our post-development land use, which is low density residential. Okay. Then our pre-development catchment area, which is five acres. And our post-development catchment is five acres. Our pre-development non-DCIA curve number is 78. Our pre-development uh, DCIA percentage is zero. Our post-development DCIA non-DCIA curve number is 78. And our post-development DCIA percentage is 50. And then the estimated area of our BMP is one acre. Okay, so again, note that our, our pre-development and post-development annual mass loadings are shown for each catchment here. Um, and now we have input everything we need for our watershed characteristics, and we're ready to move forward. So let's go to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. And so we'll do that by selecting this go to stormwater treatment analysis button. Okay, and then when you get to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet, you see a picture of the catchment configuration that you selected. Um, so again, we had three catchments in series. And it also shows you the required treatment efficiency for nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, so for, for, our, for our example, we need to get 53% nitrogen removal and about 39% 30, phosphorus removal. Um, on this sheet also is all of the buttons for all of the different BMPs that are available. Um, and then in addition, there's another button which is for our catchment and treatment summary results. And this is where you see the overall removal efficiency obtained by all of the BMPs and, and catchments that you've analyzed. So first we're going to go look at our first catchment which has a swale in it. And so we're going to select on the swale button and proceed to the swale worksheet. Okay, so we have our swale, which is in catchment one, so we're going to input that data into catchment one. Uh, as you'll see, there's catchment two and catchment three have also been populated because we input data for those catchments. However, uh, we're not, there, there isn't a swale in either of those catchments, so we'll leave that blank. Notice how catchment four is, has zero and there's nothing in it, and that has to do with the fact that we didn't input any data for catchment four in the watershed characteristics uh, worksheet. So we're going to continue with inputting our data for catchment one. So our swale top width uh, is specified as 10 feet. Our swale bottom width is specified as two feet, so we're dealing with a trapezoidal 
um, swale. Our swale length is 4,840 feet. And then also our highway length is the same. Um, the highway width, including the shoulder, is 20 feet. And then the average width of the pervious area is 25 feet. Okay, so um, now we need to uh, input the, the slope of the swale. So this is the longitudinal slope, and that's specified as 0 0.001. And then we're going to input the Manning's um, roughness coefficient as 0 0.05. And then our soil infiltration rate was specified as 5 inches per hour. And the side slope of our swale is also specified as 5. And this side slope is this Z value right here. So this tells us the, the slope of the side walls of our swale. Um, whereas our, our swale slope is the longitudinal slope. Uh, so this, uh, this value here. So. Um, we don't have a swale block in this one, so we'd simply leave these blank. Um, and then this shows us our provided treatment efficiency by the swale as uh, a, a little bit over 86%. Okay, so um, you can also see uh, down here where we have the treatment efficiency um, curve. So it relates the treatment efficiency to the retention depth. Um, and then and that allows you to read off the treatment efficiency ob obtained here. So now we're going to go and address our next catchment, catchment 2. And so we'll select on the go to stormwater treatment analysis button to go back to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. Okay, from here we have in our second catchment a retention basin. So we're going to go to the Retention Basin Worksheet by selecting the Retention Basin button here. Okay, And it was specified in our problem that we were only able to treat a quarter inch on our Retention Basin for catchment number two. However, it shows us in, um, on, on this worksheet that we need 0.837 inches in order to achieve our treatment efficiency required for this catchment. Um, obviously we're not going to be able to achieve that with this catchment so since we're over treating catchment one and then we'll also over treat catchment three and then our overall treatment sh we should be able to achieve this goal. So I'm going to input our 0.25 inches here. Okay and then so that shows that we're obtaining we're, we're achieving about a 33 percent um, reduction for both nitrogen and phosphorus. And you can also see that over here on the treatment efficiency curve. So I'm going to continue. Uh, we're going to go to catchment number three and input the data there. Okay, so back at the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. Um, now we want to do a wet detention uh, pond in catchment three. So I'm going to select the wet detention button and proceed to the wet detention worksheet. Okay, so here in the wet detention worksheet, you can see we have four catchments available. Um, again, uh, everything is, is input for catchments one, two, and three because we input data in the, um, in the watershed characteristics worksheet. The catchment four is blank as we didn't put any data there. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to input our average annual um, residence time. Um, that was specified as 30 days. Okay, uh, we were going to use a littoral zone, so we're going to select yes for littoral zone. Now notice that if you use a littoral zone in one catchment, you must use it in, in all catchments. Um, and then now we're going to specify the efficiency credit that we'll get for using a littoral zone. And that was specified as 10%. Okay, again, if, if we're we're getting 10% in one catchment, we're going to get it in all of them. Um, and then you can also look uh, down here at the treatment curves. Notice that we get different treatment for nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, and that has to do with how wet the tension achieves uh, its nutrient removal. So if we're talking about a retention system, retention achieves its nutrient removal via a reduction in water volume. 
So assuming that all of the water generated has a uniform uh, concentration throughout the whole volume, whatever percentage of volume we, re we remove, we also remove that mass of nitrogen and phosphorus um, equally. However, in wet detention, we're dealing with uh, settling as the primary um, function for removal of nutrients, as well as some chemical and biological processes. So that is why we have different removals for nitrogen and phosphorus um, when using wet detention. Okay, so now we want to see the results of, of our analysis and whether or not we were able to meet our treatment objectives. So we're going to go back to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet by selecting on the button. Okay, and then we want to go to catchment and treatment summary results. Uh, so we'll select on that button. Okay, and so here it shows a summary of our problem. So again, it brought through our, our title, which is example problem 11. You can see for catchment one, two, and three, we have a BMP specified for each one of those catchments. And as we said at the problem, we're gonna have a swale in catchment one, a retention basin in catchment two, and a wet detention um, pond in catchment three. Um, down here is the, the, the summary performance information. So again, we have three catchments in series, and our, and our picture shows that as well. It also shows the date that our analysis was run. Uh, we show our, our catchment nitrogen and phosphorus preload. We show our, our nitrogen and phosphorus postload. And then also our target reduction for the overall system that we're examining. And then also shows our provided overall treatment efficiency. Obviously, we have, we have significantly overtreated compared to what we need. Um, additionally, it shows us our discharge loads of nitrogen and phosphorus in both kilograms per year as well as in pounds per year, and our load of nitrogen and phosphorus removed in both kilograms per year and in pounds per year. Um, now, since we're in series, we're gonna get a little bit higher treatment efficiency because whatever uh, moves from catchment one to catchment two, um, some of that water will be treated again as it moves downstream. So that's gonna increase the efficiency that we get. So let's now look at if we want to instead analyze these systems in parallel as opposed to in series and see how that changes things. So this is actually very simple to do in this model. Um, all we need to do is go back to our watershed characteristics worksheet. And so I'll do that by selecting this button. Okay, and then we need to change our catchment configuration. So again, if I want to see what my options are, I can select the View Catchment Configuration button to advance to this, to this worksheet here. I can see right here at the top, this is what I want, E3 catchments in parallel. So I'm, I'll make a note of that and then go back to the previous worksheet. Okay, so in this worksheet, I'm going to just select from the drop-down menu, E3 catchments in parallel. All of your other input information stays the same, so there's no need to change anything there. Now we're ready to see how that changed our results. So I'm going to go to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. Okay, and then notice that now our catchment configuration has changed to three catchments in parallel. You can see the picture has changed here. However, our treatment efficiency stayed the same. Our configuration does not affect our treatment objectives. So now I'm going to go to the catchment and treatment summary results worksheet so that we can see the results. Okay, again, everything is the same here except our, um, our catchments are now in parallel and then our picture now shows our catchments in parallel as well. Um, if we look down, our treatment efficiency has decreased since we're in parallel and we're not getting additional treatment. Um, so originally we had 73% uh, nitrogen removal. Um, now that's gone down to 66%. And our, our phosphorus removal initially was 72% and that's dropped uh, just slightly to 71%. Um, again, it's also changed our, our discharged and load removes for both nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, so this shows you how easy it is to change configurations um, once you've already input all of your data. 
If I wanted to, I could also go through and try um, a mixed configuration where I do series and um, parallel. Um, so just real quick to show how that's done, I'll go to the watershed characteristics button again. I'll view my catchment configuration options. So let's try F where we have one is in series with three and two is in series with three, but one and two are parallel with each other. Okay, so then I'll come over here. I'll select F, mixed, three catchments, two series, one parallel. Um, and then I'll go back to stormwater treatment analysis. Notice that our picture has changed here. And then if I go to catchment and treatment summary results, again, our, our catchment configuration has changed. Our configuration here has changed. And then also note that our treatment efficiencies has, have also changed. Now we're getting 62 and 61% for nitrogen and phosphorus. And that is the end of the example problem.